Well, hello there. This is Vichar's the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. About a week ago, I had this game against a new subscriber from the UK earlier in their chess journey. They wanted to potentially play a game with me and for me to give them some feedback, you know, some tips. They actually played this game really well. This was the uh, Four Knights Italian. I had the black pieces. Now I've had shown some of these games before. It's often a really fun way, uh, fun game for black. Let's see what happened. My opponent actually played really well, except for one problem near the beginning of the game. Now, Four Knights Italian starts off E4, E5, uh, Knight F3, Knight C6, Knight C3, Knight F6, and then the Bishop. So four Knights, four Knights and out, the, the Bishop for white to C4, that's the Italian game position. Uh, it's, um, there's a number of different ways the game could end up transposing into this position. But Four Knights Italian, and here black needs to know um, the critical move, the single really good move for them, which is knight captures the pawn on e4. A really, a really good move. And the interesting thing here, you can see that it's basically 0, 0, 0. Okay, so there's absolutely nobody technically is ahead according to evaluation. But when you look at the lead chess community database, black here wins 59% to white. 37%. So in this position, black almost overwhelmingly wins. And the thing is, the logical thing is captures, and now we've got that pawn fork. Uh, and it looks like we're going to win back a piece. The fascinating thing here is, is that, you know, this position, again, it's still 0, 0, 0. Uh, now, if you look in the, the uh, description to this video, I've got a link to the article that comes with this video, and I talk about the very first uh, time that's you know, recorded in modern databases that this was played. And the player with the black pieces in that first game was Steinitz, you know, the first world chess champion. Uh, it was a casual game against uh, another player, so who, exactly who that is is kind of lost in time, a Seymour. And he plays this beautiful line and the interesting thing about Steinitz is this is after he revealed his new style of playing the positional style but in this game he plays aggressive romantic Steinitz was an absolute master at the romantic style of play interesting this game came after he sort of revealed that he thought that the best way to play was a much more positional style and in that game he gets three brilliancies. I've never even had three brilliancies in a game. You should check out that game again in the article linked to the description. Now in this position uh, it's uncommon that white will find the co uh, correct response. So the correct response is a bishop to d3 and we remain at 0, 0, 0 and after captures they capture back this way. However, that occurs, I think, only in around 17% of times, and in lower rated games, so against lower rated players, it rarely happens. It happens 10% of the time, one in 10 times, which basically mean black almost wins straight up. Now, here, white played bishop to b5. So moving almost a little bit like it's a, uh, it's a Rui Lopez or Spanish. Now these moves ostensibly seem to make sense and we'll see it looks like white wins back all their material. So here uh, after that of course we capture. There does look like a threat but they now take with check and so after captures this way doubling the C pawns White now captures the pawn on e5, and you will notice material equality. However, it's actually pretty bad for white if we look at sort of engine analysis. It's about minus four. And the reason for this is that even though it looks like white has navigated, and this is the thing, if they calculate, it looks like they've navigated uh, that series of trades in the center, but the problem for white now is that we have a uh, Blackburn Schilling Gambit type move. So their knight is here, and our queen now goes to g5. It looks like it's attacking the knight, but it's also a fork 
of the G2 pawn. No defenders because that bishop has uh, left the game and white is in some trouble. So yes, white needs to defend that knight, so that's the right move. Uh, D4 also opening up that long dark square diagonal, so you know that does force me to have to move the queen, but the queen now captures the G2 with an attack on the rook. The rook pretty much has to come here, and it's just not very good now for uh, for white because also you know potentially there's uh, there's future attacks like this not right away of course that knight is actually a bit offside. Here my opponent uh, found a really interesting move actually. Like in the actual game, I actually wondered even though I kind of knew that this was good, I actually wondered whether I made a mistake because they decided to make a very aggressive counterattack, which was queen to h5. Stockfish will call this a mistake, and in fact it sort of goes to about minus 7 or so, but the logic here of course for white is they're immediately threatening a, uh, a mate threat. So there's not a mate immediately because after queen captures, if I allow it, then my king can sidestep here, but then bishop comes, it's it's pretty much all over, not to mention, you know, there's also attack like this, it's, it's, it's just really bad. So basically if they allow it, I think it's like a mate in two or mate in three. Now after they made this move, I had a long thing. You know, the question is, what do I do? You know, do I sort of, uh, do I, you know, do this? But potentially the risk uh, after this is after captures, um, you know, captures, then they'll have a check and then they'll get to take my, uh, my rook. So that doesn't look very good. Um, so I had a long thing. And after a while, I just realized that as long as I defend my f7 pawn with bishop to e6, there's no attack. White just has nothing. And so when I felt confident that that was the case, that I didn't need to somehow bring my queen back, for instance, for uh, to uh, to defend. It is very safe for the queen to capture the rook. Of course, you know, that wins me a uh, wins me a tempo with check. King now falls forward, and now bishop e6 defending, uh, and there is no attack. Now the thing here is that the queen by herself, so my queen cannot give a, uh, a mating attack, okay? It's just not possible. Their knight on e5 is you know, really powerful in sort of making some of the, making some of the defense of all these squares. So, you know, I can't bring my queen back here. I can't bring my uh, bishop here for a check. So this knight, even though it's offside, is really, really powerful. And what I want to do is potentially dislodge it. Now, <clears throat> at this point, uh, white realizes that they don't have a lot they can do, and so they sort of push a, a side pawn. That makes sense. But here, I now first chase white's queen. I hadn't quite so thought on uh, worked out what I was going to do with that knight first. Of course, the risk, I don't want to uh, weaken any of my defenses, which will cause a problem. So firstly, uh, chase the queen. You can see Stockfish thinks, you know, maybe just uh, castle the king out of there. There's also, uh, there's bishop all the way to be, um, all the way to uh, B4, which potentially, you know, allows me to bring a second attacker. I didn't see that in the game, but that's okay. He chase the queen. Queen moves, chase the queen again, queen moves. Queen's not really part of the attack now, and so now I can dislodge that knight. And once that knight is gone, I can give a check. Second attacker, pretty much, it'll be really good. So, there we go. They capture a pawn. Looks like they're attacking, but it's fine because now I have check, queen commands the back rank, for, um, no, forces the king to move to one of these squares, but either of those squares are potentially quite all right for me. Here, that's not quite as accurate. I think they're trying to get their king activated, but now there's a check. Um, they try to move this way with a check. In fact, it's a potentially a skewer if they don't do something. So there, they block with the knight. Take with check here. Uh, they decide to move here, try to get out of the way. Now I can capture this way, discover an attack on the queen. Queen moves out of the way, but now check again. King forced back here, and now capture. 
so and you, and you will notice every move now is pretty much a check or clearing the center. And here they take that pawn, that's fine. I actually want to clear the center because that opens up lines for my pieces. Check again. And here, the king can sort of move back this way. I was thinking that they'll actually take it this way. Maybe they'll get greedy, chomp chomp. What would that look like? That is firstly a check. And then we can give something like this, which is another check. Uh, and if, if we look here, almost everything is covered. They're forced to capture the bishop. That looks fine. Capture the bishop, but then that would be made. So that was actually a, a line that I calculated. Uh, however, in the game, uh, what White ended up doing was bringing the king back onto the f-file. That's fine, because now I've got check with the other rook on the, uh, on the open file. And you will notice that I've got a checkmate net all around the king. And in fact, the only legal move for White here is to block the mate with their queen, queen blocking the uh, the f file but of course then captures check king last move where the queen was and then mate so uh, in this position they worked out that they had uh, basically lost uh, their queen so white opted to resign good game gg now i've commonly seen some decorations on chess uh, social media that beginners don't need to waste time learning any opening theory. Now the thing is, that statement needs to be understood uh, within a certain context. So just like in this game, you do need to know some very basic theory, particularly, if, um, particularly the common positions, the critical positions of lines that you play, you kind of need to know what to do. So in this game, if you're going to play the Four Knights Italian, you need to know what to do with the bishop uh, at the point of that pawn fork. Now, in terms of the general statement, yes, for beginners, you shouldn't, uh, you know, learn and memorize opening theory in an unbalanced way without understanding the, the, the logic of the opening and, and the actual tactics you're trying to do. That doesn't make any sense, but you do need to know at least a little bit of theory. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.